Friends, today is Friday, the 17th of July. We're back in the cathedral after celebrating the Eucharist, and we have a story of the Gospel of A, Gospel of Matthew, a controversy story, once again, between Jesus and the scribes and the Pharisees, and a controversy about the Sabbath, which is frequent in the Gospels. Jesus acting contrary to the law, there are many Sabbath restrictions, and Jesus oftentimes uh, found himself uh, disobeying some of those restrictions, always with the idea that people come first. People come first. His disciples are hungry, and on the Sabbath, they go through a field and they pluck off some grains of wheat to eat. And this is prohibited on the Sabbath. It's like harvesting was prohibited. And the Pharisees uh, challenge him on that. And Jesus' response is, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. It's a kind of age old distinction between following the law and following the needs of people. And we always hope that the two will come together. But sometimes the law might run contrary to what the needs of the people are. It takes wisdom and prudence to determine, should I follow the law? Should I follow my wisdom and prudence and speak in favor of the needs of people instead? One can be very harsh with the law. Many of you know that I'm a kind of lawyer. I was just a young priest many years ago when Archbishop Power surprised me by asking me to go study canon law. I had no inclination towards law. In fact, I wasn't perhaps really even the most law-abiding citizen at the time, in terms of church law, at least. Uh, but in any case, when I went to study canon law, I had a kind of conversion about law and saw its benefit and how useful it was for the unity and the good of the church. When I came home, I was appointed judicial vicar, which is the position of, of being the consultant for the bishop, to the bishop, about the canonical and legal issues of the diocese. And priests would frequently call me about legal issues as well, mostly about marriage. We have plenty of laws of marriage. And once I had to kind of make a judgment between the needs of people and the law itself. A priest, and this was when Archbishop Sample was here, so just a couple years ago, a priest called me and said, it was a Friday, not untypically, often these things come up on Fridays, told me that he had a wedding the following day, Saturday. It was an outdoor wedding. He did not have permission to do this, nor did he have delegation to do it. Those are two issues, legal issues in the church that uh, we don't have actually in our Anglo-American law. That is, something can be legal or illegal, something can be valid or invalid, and they're two different things. In this case, both of them were being violated. He didn't have the delegation of the pastor. He didn't have the permission of the bishop. Without delegation, the wedding would be invalid. But it was Friday, and the wedding was taking place tomorrow. The priest clearly had done, done what he should have done. But should the couple suffer because of that? So he asked me, what is the solution? And I said, well, I can't actually recommend anything contrary to law. You can make your own decision. But perhaps one thing you could do is to witness the wedding as you normally would. People would presume it's a Catholic wedding, but in fact, you will know that it's not a valid marriage in the church without that delegation. You need to be honest with the couple and tell them that uh, when they're back from their honeymoon, they need to get together and have a marriage blessing. The priest was relieved that there was some solution to this. He hadn't thought about that. But it was something I told him that he needed to make a decision on it, and to be honest, not to let this couple go. 
and let them go through life, in a sense, thinking they were in a valid marriage when they were not. Part of the mercy of the situation was to follow up with them. Mercy or sacrifice, mercy or the law itself. The wedding could have been canceled, but think of what that would have done to the couple and to the families. On the other hand, um, the priest put them in a position that uh, he should not have. I probably should have followed up myself to see if the priest had gotten together with them, but in any case, I told him I couldn't make that decision for him. He would need to himself. Mercy and law, prudence and wisdom. Hold that thought, and we'll see you tomorrow.